Let me illustrate. A podcast series putting the spotlight on board game artists. Hello, Oliver. My name is Remer Bidegin, and I'd like to thank you for inviting me to Let Me Illustrate podcast. Good to be here. I'm pretty new in board game industry. Rose Gauntlet Entertainment's upcoming game Keystone North America is the first board game I take a role, and we are still working on to make it beautiful and unique. I become a board game artist after Isaac Biga, the amazing CEO of the Rose Gauntlet Entertainment, contacted me for their new project, Keystone North America. After I got into the board game world, I realized that it's a great platform for an artist to show skills and capabilities. As a restless gamer, I went to computer games as well, but it feels a little bit different to think that all of your illustrations will be in a table, in the hands of a happy group of friends or family members. They look at them, your colors and strokes invite them to get in the game and have a good time. I think it's the magic of the board games. The art style I'm best known for is probably realism dressed up with fantasy elements. I study traditional art, so I love realism. And I adore all kind of fantasy art, fantasy literature, movies, medieval games, etc. But I also love to push myself to try different approaches and styles. It's essential to improve, I think. Lately, I work on stylized environments, which I find so cool. Rose Gauntlet's upcoming board game, Keystone North America, is my first board game I take a role as an artist. We are still working on it, but I can promise that it's absolutely worth the wait. The work I'm most proud of is for Keystone North America. Yes, it's my first board game, but it also gives me an opportunity to express my endless love for animals and nature. I believe that our hard work and game's vision will evoke the nature lover inside all players. I like creating artworks that wake a feeling. If it's a realistic animal, it must look through you. If it's a stylized environment, it must invite you. That's what I like creating and hoping to achieve. Well, I get my inspiration from life itself like all artists. But my books, my movies, my music, my games fit me constantly to create art. You can say that Geralt of Rivia, Corvo Atano, Quote, Black Lamora, Winchester Brothers, Beetlejuice, Jack the Pumping King, they are all my muses. If none of this works, I turn to Mother Nature to get a creative tint. I think the most important part of making artwork for board games is understanding the vision and focus of game creators. Because when you understand what they think and what they feel about the game, you create an art which reflects both of you. I believe that kind of unity brings success. The longest I worked on art for a board game is for Keystone North America. We started to work four months ago and I'm still working on it. My favorite artists are Grady Frederick, Rudy Sismanto, Andrew Kuzinski, Jordan Grimer, Veronica Kozlova. It's hard to name all of them, so the list goes on. I don't have a favorite color. I tend to choose blue and purple tones. I don't like brown, dark yellow, but I can't say there's a favorite one. Well, what very few people know about me is that I'm a crazy kind of picture fan and got a huge action figure collection of McFarlane dragons. So technically, I am the mother of dragons. <laughs> if you wanted to become a board game artist yourself, I would tell you to go ahead and do your best. If you want to get in touch, you can reach me on my ArtStation account, artstation.com slash Durga. You can check it out. Well, thanks for listening and keep playing. This podcast was made possible by the generous help of my Patreon supporters. Royal Patron, Sean Newman. Castle Guards, David Miller and James Naylor. Dice Masters, Alex Bardi, Paul Grogan and Robin Kay. And Shining Lights, Gavin Jones, Sarah Reed, Richard Simpson and Tim Vernick.